farming is, I was thinking about farming as, as a ecosystem in which disturbances happen on purpose all the time. We you know, turn up the soil and most of the crops that we plant, especially the vegetable crops, are crops that really thrive in, in these kind of new, shaken up environments. Um, it's a little longer term when you get into pasture um, and livestock management, and that's one of the reasons we do that too, to kind of increase the diversity of kind of successional stages on the farm. When I was, so, when I was in my 20s, I, I was pretty radical, I think, about how humans are, are disturbing nature, and I kind of saw humans and nature as separate, and, and it wasn't a very happy um, in, inside feeling for me. I just, I looked around and I saw all the ways that we're disturbing nature and I didn't see the ways that we were working with nature. And I, I, I didn't like agribusiness, but all the time I was eating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think there was something inconsistent in my, out, in my outlook on life and humans' place in the ecosystem. So um, the whole advent of organic agriculture and, and the, especially in our area, why it's, it's catching on so big um, is really exciting to me. because. I do see it as a way that we humans can minimize our disturbance of nature and can work within the natural systems and still create food and, and, and nutrients for ourselves. Well, the farm is about 34 acres of land, about 24 of it, or about 20 of it is um, tillable land, about 15 of that is in vegetables at any, any given year, and the other five of it is in uh, forage crops, followed from, uh, from tillage agriculture for a year. Um, we have a small number of uh, chickens and pigs and sheep, and we're slowly growing that part of the operation to integrate them more into the farming production, including animals in, in the farm to make it more of an ecological system. Um, of ecology. So there's the sun. The whole thing is driven by sunlight. You know, photosynthesis is it. You know, photosynthesis is the key to this whole thing. You know, we got all these plants, you know, who are, uh, I always think of it as plants are making something from nothing, you know, they're taking that sunlight, they're taking, they're taking mainly nitrogen, carbon, oxygen, and lots of other trace minerals, they put them into big, long chains, complex molecules, that then um, all the animals, the bugs, all the microorganisms, all of them are all you know, in the down the food chain or the food web, and they're they're then breaking those all back down. But it's photosynthesis from the sun that that drives that drives this whole process. And then we have all these various nutrients and energy that's flowing through the system. System, you know, just a million, you know, circular arrow, arrows of of how all these things are flowing around in here. Um, the nutrients flowing around. And then there's all the actual interactions, which is the more interesting thing. That how this animal interacts with this plant, and how that bug interacts with that, and how these all interact with each other. Um, what I like to think about what I do, and other farmers do, we come in here, we put a boundary around this system, and we simplify the hell out of it. Grossly simplify it. We're going against nature. We want, we want it to be uh, um, very simple. Um, the other thing we're doing is, to some degree, we're, we're bringing in, the, you know, we're drawing a box around this, and we're bringing in lots of nutrients. So what we have going so far is um, uh, laying hens and you know, laying eggs. We're selling uh, free range organic eggs. Um, and those, those chickens are grazing on that legume and grass mix that's already you know, out there on that fallow vegetable land. So you got the, the legumes fixing atmospheric nitrogen, chickens grazing and pooping there, plus being a, fed a lot of grain. So all that poop is dropping there. And then the chickens loop into the greenhouse too. They uh, winter in one of the greenhouses, one or two of the greenhouses. So um, we put a lot of mulch hay bedding in there. So you got the chicken manure and the mulch hay bedding in there. We compost it in place and then raise vegetables in there. Um, out on the land, we also, so far, we've been grazing a few um, lambs and calves. We're buying in lambs and calves and feeding them for meat. Um, Plus we have two oxen in training. Um, so those those uh, grazing animals are a couple things they do is they're you know 
they're grazing down that grass and legumes that were growing on that fallow land. Um, they're eating a lot of crop residue. I work, I moved the, uh, been, right now I've been moving the calves through our, all our uh, brassicas, cabbage and uh, um, broccoli that we're done with. And uh, it's also a weedy mess. So they eat all the, they eat all the, all the leftover um, brassicas down to the ground, eat a lot of the weeds, weed seeds, poop it all in, we come in and disc that in and plant a cover crop, it sucks up that nitrogen and grows it very quickly into a, into a forage that'll go dormant, sit there over winter, in spring we'll plow it in, those nutrients will be released in the ground, we'll plant vegetables right into there to suck up those nutrients that uh, have been stored in plant matter over the winter. Um, so when something happens to disturb a system, you know, in this case, uh, churning up the soil, killing a lot of the um, plant biomass, a lot of the plant material that's growing there, that's um, kind of setting back the clock a bit and starting, starting the process over of plants growing. And there's some plants that um, grow really well in those kind of new, newly shaken up environments and they often uh, correspond with plants that we like to eat because they're often sort of these uh, living fast die hard kind of plants um, that grow quickly produce a lot of um, offspring you know like fruits that we want to eat um, and have a short lifespan so that we can start again so that a lot of those characters so crop plants. most of our uh, crop plants that we eat were developed in sort of regions where agriculture originated from wild plants that were exactly that. The yeah, grain crops, a lot of the vegetable crops were early succession wild plants that we then, uh, early humans, uh, selected for more of those traits, but that's that's where those came from. Yeah, given, you know, given time, most ecosystems would tend towards a bit more kind of lower processing and stability. You know, basically, New England turns into a forest if you let it alone. 150 years ago, yeah, something like that. Uh, most of this region was cleared for agriculture, and that's why you find stone walls in the woods now. Um, that the, you know, before it, once those farms were abandoned for a variety of reasons, uh, less so down in the, in the valleys where the soils are really good. Um, succession, forest succession just kind of went along its merry way. So sumac is, is one of, it's actually related to poison ivy, but it's not, it's okay, um, is one of these kind of early successional shrubby species that comes in. Um, I don't know, if we walked away from this and went on a 25 year vacation, came back, um, we'd be finding you know, some kind of shrubby turning towards forest state. You know, probably seeded in from a lot of the different. We'll see um, some of that up, up yeah, there, a lot, yeah, you know, some of the different trees that you see in the hedgerow, and you know, chances are there it would be pretty ugly and full of invasive plants. But you know, if you went away for another hundred years, I couldn't tell you exactly what it would happen, but it would it would look like a forest um, <coughs> that you know typically grows around here. You might have the clues that it was a farm field because you know that, that barbed wire fence would still be here and there. Um, you'd, you'd probably run across that. Um, you'd probably see some trees that looked like they grew out in the open. Um, maybe in this field white pine would seed in and, and classically see the cabbage pines that grow up in, in old fields that are really branchy and don't really you know, grow up straight and tall because they don't have neighbors sort of forcing them to do that is one of a few reasons for that. Um, so, you know, that's just, that's just what happens in New England. So farming is pushing back against that every year. Um, every year.